Friends, today we're talking about the Instax Mini Evo. This is a really cool camera. It's a hybrid digital and analog camera by Fujifilm, specifically for the Instax Mini Film. If you've been thinking about this camera, have one of these cameras, or just love Fujifilm and the retro aesthetic and everything, that's what we're going to be talking about today. Specifically, how this camera and cameras like this didn't go far enough to help Fujifilm and what they might be able to do to fight back against the dead and discontinued X-Pro3. Guys, if you guys like photography like I do and you love analog photography, even these hybrid things, even if you think it might be an abomination or something a little bit different, hybrid, digital, analog, <laughs> instant film, that's what we're talking about today. Guys, I'm a wedding photographer here in Virginia Beach, Virginia, Hampton Roads, all up and down the East Coast for the past 12, 15 years, since 2012, over 500 weddings, and today I'm sharing my discussion experience like that with you all. A lot of things that we're talking about today kind of revolve around a question or a comment that I got on my video about five things I hate about this camera. And of course, titles like that are always clickbaity. I actually don't hate this camera. I think it's a very good instant camera. I think it's a horrible digital camera. The reason is quite simple. The sensor is terrible. And the sensor is important because it's taking the image rather than in an analog instant camera and processing that image to be printed digitally through the LED printer that's inside on Fujifilm Instax Mini Film. That's the way this works. It allows it to be in a nice compact form about the size of a Fujifilm Instax printer, actually a little bit smaller since the earlier technologies. This is the Share Printer 2 Instax Mini Film. And it allows them to uh, allow it to function like a retro camera, similar to their X100 series. The X100 series and the Mini Evo share similarities, as you can see them right here. Similar size, weight, and stuff like that. Well, maybe not the weight, but size and, and feel. Definitely not the professional build of the X100 uh, series, but definitely the look there. You On the back, you get a nice big viewfinder, big screen, and you can do some uh, uh, very minimal editing to the, to the prints before you print them. Printing the image is pretty cool. It just pops up from the top and you get even this really neat print lever. So it makes you feel like you're shooting film. Now earlier I had brought up the X-Pro3 and it being discontinued. The X-Pro3 was a uh, professional body in a rangefinder style. I had the X-Pro1 back in the day and I absolutely loved it. The thing that made the X-Pro3 different was the back of the X-Pro3 did not have an LCD screen that you could see without folding it down. It meant that to review images and look at your images while you're taking pictures, the screen had to be folded down and would most normally be used in the up position, which meant that you couldn't see your image before you took the picture. Well, that radical design that mimicked film cameras of the forevers, right? There's nothing on the back of this OM4. Right? really irritated the, uh, I guess, film community in many ways, or at least some people. And there was a lot of criticism about taking off the natural use of that LCD screen. I'm going to say it right now, and this is why I think it's so important for analog photography, as we're talking about with Instax Mini Evo. If you can't do it in film, you can't do it, period. I'm looking at you right now, and I'm not saying this to be bold or mean, but if you consider yourself a photographer and you can't go out and shoot film using the Sunny 16 rule right now, then you can't do what your grandparents did without even thinking about it. It's that simple. The idea that a camera needs to have some kind of display on the back so that you can get the proper exposure by chimping, by looking at it and cheating, so to speak, it makes no sense. That doesn't mean that this isn't important. The screen on the back isn't important and helpful. Sure, that's, that's why we have them. Why not use them, live view and everything else? But to have a whole camera series killed because it mimicked film too much, like the X-Pro3, is just ridiculous. Now, there were some other things surrounding the X-Pro3's, um, I guess, debacle. I think that there was a lawsuit about the screens or something like that as well, or saying how professional or, or anything that it was. Uh, that's not where I think that this actually goes. I think Fujifilm, through their new ownership, I believe they've, they've gone through a, a change over the past couple of years, uh, has been looking the way of Olympus Digital, right? And Olympus, right? The camera company market, the camera market is shrinking and they don't know really what to do in order to kind of keep a lot of their core uh, competencies going with photography, specifically Kaizen, the constant improvement concept, which was when I got into shooting Fujifilm, they were constantly upgrading the firmware of their equipment. 
yes, they were using APS-C sized cameras, uh, but the cameras were built of the highest quality. You just couldn't get a better built device in the APS-C format. And they completely skipped full frame and went straight to medium format. Something that may have been a miss for them in the long run. One thing that has remained popular ever since it came out was the Fujifilm Instax mini series of photo printers and photo cameras. And now the Evo, their hybrid cameras. They have a Liplay and a Square 10, I think, 20, that's also digital, hybrid, analog, and digital. And that has been going strong since 1989, 1998, excuse me, 1998. So they've got a film industry. Now, these, the camera of their professional X bodies and the Evo and their analog series are very separate from what I've been able to tell. They're not talking together. You can see how the teams may have collaborated on the uh, Mini Evo, but it still wasn't quite there. I couldn't see how someone that was a product designer or product manager for the X100 uh, series would have allowed some things like this ring to go the way it was unnarled, or even to suggest that a tiny sensor that it's got was okay. If those two guys were, if those two teams were collaborating closer, you would think that some of that design language and, and philosophy would have trickled down. This, however, is an example of the best built, most well thought out Instax camera that Fujifilm has ever created. And I have to say, like I told you before, I believe it's a good instant camera and a bad digital camera. Uh, it feels okay. It's, it's, it's actually pretty well built, but it doesn't feel anything like one of these. And this is where I'm going with this conversation. And the idea that Fujifilm may be kind of listful in where their thinking is, what would happen they actually combine something like that X Pro One, which is a larger body, and this camera together. Yeah, it's going to make it bigger. It won't make it as thick as that. You'd have interchangeable lenses. Heck, even if they just made a professional built-in bodied X100 series, it'd be a little bit thicker. It wouldn't be as thick as both because components could share space in here, but it would be a little bit thicker, and then you would have something extremely unique in a world of sameness. Right now, all of the camera manufacturers are trying to get something new out there to really make things worthwhile. Sony just announced paid firmware updates because they're just not making the money in the cameras. It's just not there. Your cell phone has taken over. Now, picture this. You've got an X-Pro series camera or an X100 series camera that does have the print function built into it. So it is a little bit thicker. Whether or not the lens can come off or doesn't come off doesn't matter to me in this instance. You're out there, you're a working professional like I am, and you're photographing a bride. Why would I photograph a bride with an X100 series camera? Mainly it's got a beautiful leaf shutter built into it, which means that I can use flash very simply. Because of that leaf shutter, I can sync at higher shutter speeds, a built-in neutral density filter. And I have always loved this camera for outdoor wide shots. It's just beautiful. I mean, even portraiture, when I put the adapters on, like the 50 mil adapter, well, it's not really 50, it's a 35, but you get what I'm saying, a 50 mil full frame equivalent. Now imagine when I'm out there photographing that bride, and then I have to take my time send my picture over here to print and then hand it over to, I never do that. I usually wait to the end of a wedding if I'm gonna do something like that. Or I break out a purpose-built camera for that, like the TL70 or the RF70 or the SQ70, all great cameras by Bent Camera. Imagine that same thing, now I'm photographing my bride and all I do is click and then a picture jacks. And so now before she walks out or at some point in time, maybe at the first look, I have something to hand to her father or her mother or her that's right there and it ejects straight from the camera. Think about this in the regards that I shoot raw, but your previews are always in a JPEG format. They always show whatever film simulations you have selected at the time. So imagine shooting even double raw plus JPEG, uh, the film simulations to one card, the raw to another one for your edits. But the most important part is the immediacy of being able to click that little lever and print straight out of a full uh, professional bodied camera with a proper sensor. My goodness, I'm going to tell you, I'd pay out the nose for it. I think something like that is really uh, indicative of where the market would go. Fujifilm usually thinks, well, why would we make you do that? You could just buy two things, right? You could buy this. It would cost less. If it breaks, it'd be easier to fix. Yes, you don't have to get rid of your 
your, uh, I, I forget what the new, the link, yeah, the new printers that they have, the generation three and four printers are the mini link printers or the wide link or the square link printer. You don't have to get rid of those. You just continue to sell them. People that want those want them. But having a special run of cameras specific with a mini or a wide, in this case, printer built into it, on that professional body, man, that could be something really worthwhile. I think there's a market for something like that there, especially if you can interchange the lens. Now, the Fujifilm X-Pro1 and the X-Pro series was never a small camera. It was nowhere near as small as that. It was quite a bit larger. More hand grips, more space, more bigger, everything. So the series was always a little bit larger of a camera. Just imagine using that space a little bit more efficiently and adding something like a printer built into it. That would keep the sale of film going on. You'd have that immediate eject. It would feel more like shooting instant film back in the day, but you would also have all the great glass, the great controls, the great handling built in to what Fujifilm has been known for with their great X-series cameras. At the very end, I think that it's something worth considering, and it's one of the reasons that I think with this Fujifilm Instax Mini Evo, it was a great start, but they got to push forwards with this. Forwards, forwards, forwards. If nothing else, an X, uh, a Mini Evo Pro version would be really cool, one with a metal build, right? You're always going to buy film for it and a better sensor. How much would you pay for something like that? Even if it was a, a one-inch sensor built in here, like in some of the smaller Sonys, the uh, RX-7s, and so that one-inch sensor. What if it was a one-inch sensor in here, but it also had the built-in uh, film that you could put in, and now you had a, a, a better build as well, uh, uh, like a magnesium alloy or a steel or an aluminum alloy frame with some faux rubber instead of this plastic? I mean, what would you do? And then the ability to have a telescoping lens or even interchangeable lenses... I just think that even in that iteration, Fujifilm would be working on a, a really huge moneymaker. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. I hope you had a, con a good time talking about this and musing over these concepts with me. The way that I use the gear is kind of as you see right here. It's quite a bit of fun. And I think no matter what, if you were to pick up the Fujifilm Instax Mini Evo today, you're getting a good instant camera. It's fun to be able to reprint them. It's a lot of fun to use, but it's, it's a pretty bad digital camera. The files that you get from it, they're really meh. Guys, I want to thank you so much for watching. Remind you, I'll catch you all on the flip side. Bye for now.